Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Danielle, AKA Stitcherista here on YouTube. And today is Saturday, June 25th. So whew, I'm trying to cool myself down right now. It is, I think almost four o'clock here. Bill and I just got back from the park. So it is like 90 degrees here today. And it feels like it when you're not sitting on the water and there's a breeze. So yesterday I was off work and after I did the video, I wound up doing some more stitching and I watched the movie Marry Me. If you follow me on Instagram, I showed a picture of it. Marry Me with um, Jennifer Lopez and Owen Wilson. Jennifer Lopez is a famous pop star and she winds up marrying Owen Wilson on stage at one of her concerts, okay? I won't give it away. It's such a good movie. Absolutely loved it. I watched it on Amazon Prime. Such a heartwarming, feel-good movie. And you, I like movies where you root for the underdog. And you're rooting for Owen Wilson's character. So, highly recommend. While I was doing that... I was working, of course, on my Squeeze the Day by Primrose Cottage Stitches. I'm stitching it on 18 count perforated paper with one strand of DMC. Now, the yellow, the original yellow that they used in this is DMC 726. When I started to stitch the word squeeze, the yellow was not showing up. And I said, okay, well, it's got to be yellow, right? It's lemons, okay? But it wasn't showing up. So... I said, all right, let me see if there's another yellow I can find in the DMC line. And there was. I decided to go with 728, which wound up being perfection and showing up. So let me show you my progress. I got the word squeeze done and then there's like a green board, a green right here. So, so very cute. Absolutely cannot wait that the washi tape that I got, I think is going to look so phenomenal on this around the edge. Now I think the green with on the washi tape is a little different than this green, but I don't care. It was just too cute. It's green and it's got lemons on it. I just was dead. So enjoying that very much and I meant to link that pattern in the description box yesterday and I forgot so what I'm going to do is in this video and going forward until I'm done stitching these three I'm going to link this one the summer one with the watermelon and then I'm going to also link the plant bloom grow one so yeah um my hair, now I don't know because I'm not a stylist when I dry my hair I feel like the ends it looks healthy now after I curl it. But when I first dry it, I feel like the ends are damaged. So the haircut that I actually want, because this is layered already, but I kind of wanted it more layered. I feel like I'm probably going to be getting like this much cut off of it. I'm not telling Bill that. Um, I told him today, so I kind of put the bug in his ear. I said, you know, I think the ends of my hair are damaged from like all the bleach and stuff. I said, so I'm probably going to have to get some of it cut off because my appointment is already next Saturday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it though. Um, to get some more brown put in, get this lightened, this brown lightened up. I just, I have to like this stylist. Please God, please God. <laughs> okay, so I did that. And Bill went fishing last night with um, our neighbor across the street. So he was gone from right after work. So he was gone from like four until eight. And so I watched the movie, did some stitching and I read some, I sat outside for like two hours. I am half more than halfway through the book, the Raleigh Sager book. Um, it's picking up like it's pretty good. It's not, I have to admit, I like all of his books. I'll probably always read all of his books because I've read every single one he's written and the first one he ever wrote was my absolute favorite, Final Girls. This one is not a book that makes me want to grab it at every chance I get. I love books that make me want to read it at every single meal, every single whatever. Um, 
one of the books that did make me do that and one that um, my friend Sandra is reading and she told me I have to mention on the channel. I did mention it when I was reading it, but it is The Housemaid by Frieda McFadden. If you have not read that and you like a twisty, turny book, that one will keep you on the edge of your seat. Because the first half of the book, my nose is running. The first half of the book, you're like, what the actual F? And then when it gets to the second half, all your questions are answered. And you're still like, what the actual F? Yeah. So good though. So, wait a minute, I gotta pause for a second. Okay, I had to get a tissue, like that was craziness. I wasn't just gonna sit here, keep wiping my nose with my hand, that's disgusting. So this morning, before I tell you my epiphany, which I discovered not yesterday, the day before, I've had epiphanies here in the past like couple weeks, just, mm -hmm. this morning we got up, we didn't really have any plans except Bill knew he was going to change the brake pads on his truck, which took him three hours, but it saved us a lot of money. So while he did that, I did laundry, I sat outside and I had breakfast and read my book. And then I got in the shower and I said, before I got in the shower, I said, hey, do you want to go to the park today and we can pack a lunch and just enjoy the day? Because we didn't really have any plans. And uh, he said, yeah, that sounds good. So I got in the shower and just as I was getting done getting ready, he came in and he was like covered in grease from Emmer's head to toe. And I said, well, you get in the shower. I'm going to put away the laundry and then I'll make up our lunches. I had bought this cooler that I was going to take with me when I went to retreats and I've never taken it. It was the perfect size. We each had a sandwich. We each had a banana. We had a turkey sandwich. Um, I had a bag of Quest chips, which are my favorite all time low carb protein chips. Oh my God, they're so good. He had a Weight Watchers bag of, um, we bought, like, they have, like, nacho things. He really likes them. So we bought those. He's He had that. And then we each had a little Weight Watchers. Weight Watchers also makes these, like, um, chocolate bars. Bill's doing Weight Watchers. I'm just doing, like, low carb. Because um, that's always been a success for me in the past and I've already even though I haven't lost like a bunch of weight um, it's only been two weeks um, I feel tremendously better and that that's really great um, my goal and I'm not gonna talk about it a lot on here probably just because I talked about it like ad nauseum before and then I put on almost all the weight back um, I want to lose a total of 60 pounds I know that seems like a lot but I weighed in at 188 and I would like to get to 128. Yeah, 60 pounds, that's a lot. Um, I figure it's gonna take me, a pound a week is my goal, so it's gonna take me 60 weeks. So it's gonna take me until roughly like August of next year. Let's go. Um, so we packed them, like I said, we had a banana, we had um, the bag of chips, the turkey sandwich, and the little chocolate bar, and he had two pickles. I'm not a huge pickle fan. He's like in love with them. So, um, and yeah, get your minds out of the gutter. If you're thinking pickle McKenna, <laughs> she always points out like the stuff I say that like can be construed as something else. So the normal, there are two parks that are close to us. Okay. The one park we always go to, we decide, okay, we're going to go to it. It was so insanely crowded and there was like no shade. Like I need to be in the shade. I can't sit in the blazing sun. So I said, well, why don't we try the other park? Oh my God. It was like heaven on earth. So the original park we went to was called Fort Smallwood Park. And then the second one that we wound up staying at, we were there for like three hours, um, Downs Park. So, it, and it is like night and day. These two parks, it's unbelievable how different they are. This next one we went to, lots of trees, lots of grass, um, lots of benches. We sat on, we took our camping chairs and we sat under a tree. Just 
not a lot of people and everyone that was there was cordial, quiet, um, no loud music. It was very, very nice. We had such a good time. And so many people brought their dogs. It was like a dog show, like a free dog show. So, of course, we're looking at all the dogs. I brought my book, but I didn't read any because we were talking or just sitting there. It was very breezy because it was on the water. So I actually went and got my jacket for my car, believe it or not. Once you stepped out from under the shade of the tree, though, hot AF. So we were there for three hours, had our lunch, had a good time. I took a picture. I put it on Instagram if you follow me on Instagram. Yeah, we had a good time. That's like one of our favorite things to do. And it only costs $6 to get into the park. So that's a no-brainer. Especially when he's not fishing on a Saturday and we have no other plans. You know, it's it's nice to go and do that. And there were so many other couples there that brought books and lunches. And somebody even brought this big picnic basket. And I was like, ooh, what do they have in there? Like, I'm nosy like that. Um, but a really, really good time that we had. And then we came home. So, and now I'm here, I'm doing this video. Okay, so my epiphany. So you guys know, if you've been watching my videos, first off, I wanna say thank you to everyone who commented and said they are in the group of people that watch every day. Um, I told Bill about my change of thought about my viewers and he was like, well, I'm glad you have that viewpoint, you know, about it. Yeah, me too. Like, I don't know why I never looked at it from that perspective. So, I am always on the lookout for a perfect blend of coffee and creamer that's not high calorie, high sugar, high carb. For years, and I mean years, I have been a dark roast coffee kind of person. And every creamer that I've tried that has been like sugar free, low carb has basically tasted like ass, okay? <laughs> so, I found this creamer. I did some research again. Yes, even though I like Starbucks sugar-free, zero sugar, car uh, caramel macchiato, it still wasn't like, right? So I was doing some more research and I came across on Amazon and I read a lot of the reviews and the reviews were really good. Um, this is Nut Pods at Almond and Coconut Creamer. Now it comes in, they have a variety pack and I bought the variety pack. So it has cookie butter, sweet cream, and I want to say hazelnut. This one's really good. Um, so it's only, here's the information. It's only five calories for one tablespoon and two carbs, but then there's two sugar alcohol. So basically zero carbs. Um, that's a no brainer. So I put two tablespoons. So mind you, I put in dark coffee. I put in one tablespoon and I'm like, I mm, can't really taste it. So I put in another one. I mean, it's only five more calories. And I'm like, why does this not taste right? And like a bolt of lightning from God himself, I'm guessing, it hit me that the different kinds of roast of coffee make a huge difference in how it tastes with creamer, as in Dark roast is the most boldest tasting. Then there's medium, then there's light. And I thought, oh my God, I just hit upon something here, right? So I had some medium roast coffee from a subscriber that had gotten me some um, holiday blend K-cups from Starbucks. And I had them in the closet. And I said, I'm going to try it. Complete utter game changer. The creamer tasted fantastic. So I'm like, all right, now I have to get some other K-cups that are medium roast. And what's the good thing about medium roast K-cups is a lot of them, you can get them flavored where the flavors like infused, no extra calories or anything. So I bought a sample pack on Amazon and kind of the flavors I got like Friendly's butter crunch ice cream flavor. Um, Coney Island Caramel. The one I had today was Cheesecake. <gasps> oh my God. I, I just can't. Like how long? Look, Blueberry Cobbler. I guarantee you that one's really good. This one is Ice Cream Sandwich. Like, are you fucking kidding me right now? <laughs> I think the, it was 40 K cups I got for $20. I am just, I'm blown away. I'm blown away at how good so now I really need to try the Starbucks one again in the medium roast, but I really like this because it's only five calories. I had two cups of coffee today. 
for um, 20 calories. Let's go. Yeah, it was so good. How all these years did I not put two and two together about the roast of the coffee making it taste different? And so I messaged Jill on Thursday and she was like, I would have never thought about that. Yeah, me neither. Until my brain hit me over the head or God or the universe or something was finally putting it into my brain. So very happy now with coffee. Mm hmm. Yeah. And not going to like derail my healthy efforts. Okay, so let's read today's Unfuck Yourself entry. Excellent, Tear. If you give people the room to change their mind, they usually do. What I have found, too, is, you know, when you're talking with someone and they say something that you wouldn't necessarily agree with, if you keep quiet instead of filling that silence with your opinion, sometimes it makes them change theirs or it makes them give it more thought, right? I've learned that. Um, I also am of the mindset that if you really feel strongly about something, don't let someone sway your mind, right? Trust your instinct. Trust that little spidey sense. Okay, we're going to read another small miracle story. And someone asked me what book this was. So I did link them the book. But this was from, I want to say this was from Bonnie. This was from a subscriber. And I'm so very grateful because the stories in here are just so utterly amazing. And I'm going to be really sad when we get to the end of it. Although there is another book, I think, or two or whatever of these stories. So I will be searching them out. Okay. So today's story is two pages. A well-known editor at a major publishing house was constantly besieged by writer friends who bombarded him with book proposals and unsolicited manuscripts. Oy, right? One acquaintance was especially persistent and petitioned the editor tenaciously to consider his novel. Finally, he reluctantly agreed to take a look at it. Everyone thinks they're a writer, grumbled the editor as he grudgingly removed the manuscript from the slush pile. Pleasantly surprised to discover that the book had merit, the editor decided to take it home for further study. The 400-page manuscript had been enclosed in a gift box, and the editor placed the gift box on the front seat of his car. Before heading home, however, he made a stop at a local restaurant for a quick bite. He parked on a dimly lit street and rushed into the eatery, forgetting to lock the car doors. Can we guess what's going to happen? When he returned to the car half an hour later, he discovered that it had been broken into and his radio removed. Worse, far worse. The gift box containing the manuscript was gone. The radio could easily be replaced, but the writer had told him repeatedly that he had failed to make a duplicate of the manuscript and that the copy the editor had in his possession was the only copy. And now it had been stolen. Can you imagine? Can you imagine what that editor is like? Oh my thinking God, right? The editor's heart sank. How was he going to tell his friend that the book he had worked on for three years, his magnum opus, his masterpiece, was gone? No, it wasn't right to do it now from a payphone on the street with traffic in the background. He would wait until he got home and call him from the relative calm of his study. He knew he was procrastinating, but he couldn't help it. That call would be one of the hardest things he ever had to do in his life. The moment he arrived home, the phone rang. It was the writer, his voice indignant. Oh, said the editor, taken aback, I was just going to call you. Yeah, and I know about what, interrupted the writer angrily, and I think it's just disgusting. What? The editor was puzzled. How could the writer have known about the stolen manuscript? He hadn't told anyone yet. What do you mean? asked the publisher. What do I mean? You know very well what I mean, the writer exploded. So you didn't like my book, fine. You have a right to your opinion. But did you have to show your contempt by throwing it into my backyard, into the mud? What? <laughs> Having been chased by a pair of eagle-eyed cops, 
The thieves who had broken into the editor's car had tossed the weighty manuscript over a fence into the nearest backyard. The writer's backyard. So subsequently, of course, the novel was published because I'm guessing, now what are the odds that the, the guy that stole it is running from the cops and he's tossing it and he tosses it over a fence and it's the guy who wrote the book. So obviously the editor was probably like, oh, let me tell you a story. That's a good one. That's a good one. Wow. That book was meant to be published, right? The, the thief probably saw a gift box and thought, ooh, something else. He probably didn't think it was a manuscript, I'm sure. Okay, that was fantastic. All right. So I go, hope you guys are all having a good weekend and a good Saturday. I will be back on Monday. As always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below, and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing and spending about 21 minutes of your time with me today, and I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys.